And maybe this morning, child of God, this is where you are. You're on the path right now. And life for you at this very moment is anything but easy and anything but pleasant. And perhaps this morning you're questioning God. Maybe there's someone here this morning and you're arguing with God. And this morning you've been complaining about God and complaining to God. And at this very day, this very day, your heart and your soul and your mind is filled with worries and filled with anxiety. Perhaps yesterday the path for you was very difficult. You don't know how you made it through yesterday. Perhaps maybe this very day the path is so demanding And as you look ahead, that path is so daunting. The path that we find ourselves on at times can be anything but pleasant. It can be anything but joyful. It can be anything but peaceful. But for the child of God, it can still be hopeful. Here's what the Lord wants you to say, see this morning. The path where you're called to walk at this moment in time, man, you, for you, you don't know how you're going to make it. The way, of, the way ahead is so difficult. Here's what God, this is the message God has given for me to you this morning. You're not to turn back. You're not to go around it. God is asking you this morning to face it. God doesn't want you this morning, my dear, to try and turn back. He doesn't want you this morning to ignore the path. He wants you to face it. Even though this morning the path ahead may be engulfed with the fog of fear, And maybe that path is engulfed with the fog of frustration. God doesn't want you to deny it. And God doesn't want you to turn back from it. God wants you to face it this morning. The old saint of long ago could look up and say, He knoweth the way that I take even though I don't know. But he knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I will come forth as go. You see, the old saint of God of long ago, even though the path at his present time was unbearable, and so difficult, I am so painful, he knew that the end wouldn't end in tragedy. It would end in triumph. Well, you see, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, we have here Moses' final act of ministry. It's a ministry of encouragement. It's a ministry of encouragement, and mind you, they needed it because the way ahead was going to be very difficult. 
The way ahead so that they could claim the promised land was going to be a difficult one, and they needed all the encouragement that they could get. And listen, child of God, between the whole lot of us in this tabernacle, we all need encouragement. And there's nobody maybe needs it more than me. We all need encouraged at times. And Moses wanted to encourage the, the people of Israel as they follow through with God to claim the promised land. One thing God wants you to remember this morning. God wants you to remember that you're His child. God wants you to remember, child of God, you're precious to Him. God wants you to know that you're His everything to Him. And no difficult path or impossible circumstance can change that child of God. Neither can it alter it. You're still his child. And God not only wants you to understand as to who you are, God wants you to understand as to who he is. For the Christian God is our heavenly Father. And listen, God wants you to know there's nobody loves you and there's nobody cares for you and there's nobody protecting you more so than our heavenly Father. As Moses brings this final act of ministry of encouragement, he gives them a promise, a wonderful promise for this perilous pathway that lay ahead. And I believe it's a promise for some sister or some brother in this meeting this morning. Tomorrow, for you, it may seem impossible. The way, of, the way ahead may seem to you impossible. You don't know how you're going to take it. But here's God's promise. And here's a promise for your perilous path. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 31, and it's verse number 8, and here's the promise. Now listen very carefully what it says. It says here, And the Lord, He it is, that doth go before thee. And I want you to notice, first of all, in that verse, it's a promise that is assuring. And the Lord, it says, it is he that doth go before thee. The children of Israel had a lot to face in the days ahead. The children of Israel had so much to conquer in the days of he ahead. There was the impossible Jericho to be conquered. There was the nations to drive out. But Moses, Moses gave them this promise to encourage them. And it is the Lord that doth go before thee. Do you know what that promise teaches me in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse number 8? Do you know what it teaches me? It teaches me that every step ahead of me, God has already been there, and God has it all worked out. And child of God this morning, maybe you're frustrated and fearful over the way ahead. Let me just encourage your heart this morning. The Lord's been there before you. And the Lord has it all worked out. Because you see, it is the Lord, He it is, that doth go before thee. Do you know where the Lord is right now concerning you? I'll tell you where He is. He's there standing at your tomorrow waiting on you. 
And whatever you have to face tomorrow, he's already there and he's it all worked out. He's there waiting on you in the following week, in the following month, in the following year, because, you see, God goes ahead of us. You can't understand the way ahead, but listen, God knows it. And here's the thing, because God goes ahead of us and goes before us, God knows the grace that you need to face tomorrow. God knows the grace that you need for the path ahead. And friend, you'll not know that grace. You'll not know that grace. You'll not experience that grace. You'll not obtain that grace until you move forward. When Daniel faced the den of lions, you know what Daniel realized? God was there before him, and God had it all worked out. When the three Hebrew princes were facing the fiery furnace, do you know what they realized? <laughs> the Lord was there before them. Had it all worked out. When Moses was at the Red Sea and there seemed to be no way forward and the Egyptians were coming thundering behind them and there was no escape, do you know what the children of Israel learned that day? God was there before them and he had it all worked out. Listen, you can't work it out this morning. Don't you try and work it out because God has it already worked out. Try and stop, friends. Don't be torturing yourself. God through my lips is telling you this morning, stop torturing yourself. Trying to work it out in your own head. God has already it all worked out. It is the Lord that doth go before thee. Maybe recent days, child of God, your path has been disappointing. Things hasn't worked out the way you planned or the way you hoped. It's not that God has failed you, child of God. Not one bit of it. But you see, God's ways are not only always our way. You see, for the children of Israel, as, as these folk have experienced, you know, God leads us along a path that brings us into serious times of testing at times. But God always sees us through. It's a promise that is assuring. It is the Lord that doth go before you. Whatever you're fearful of this week, don't try and work it out. You let the Lord take control because He has already it all worked out. Now look at that verse again because it's a promise that is abiding. Look at it again. And the Lord hate is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. Child of God, listen. Maybe it's to do with business, I don't know, or to do with your family, I don't know, or to do with your health, I don't know. You know and God knows, and as long as God knows, that's all who needs to know. There's one thing God wants you to know. Not one thing happens in your life And not one thing comes into your life without His knowledge. Whatever comes into our lives, child of God, whether it's good or whether it's bad, God knows it's coming before you know it comes. Do you remember Genesis chapter 37? There's a young lad there, 17 years of age, his name was Joseph. And God gave him two dreams. Two dreams. 
And I'm sure Joseph said to himself, boy, this is it. God has given me this plan. God has given me this purpose. But you know the problem with Joseph was this. He didn't know the end of the story. I know you and I know the end of Joseph's story, but you remember this, Joseph didn't know. You remember what happened, Joseph. You remember in the very same chapter, Joseph was ready to go until the brothers got him in the field and they stripped him. And you remember how they cast him into a pit. And I'm sure at that point he was questioning God. His plans and his hopes were crumbling around him. That's what he thought. And then you will remember, you'll remember, child of God, when they took him out of the pit, they sold him to the Ishmaelites, and they brought him down into Egypt. And I'm sure Joseph was wondering, Lord, how is this your plan? Lord, where's your hand in all this? He couldn't see the hand of God. And you remember what happened? He ended up in Potiphar's house. But you know, child of God, this was all part and parcel of, of God's plan this morning. And listen, he, he was there because God allowed him to be there. God sent him there because God needed him there. And maybe this morning, child of God, you need to be told this. You're in a difficult place. You can't understand as to why where you are this morning. And it's tough, and it's unpleasant. But listen, God needs you exactly where you are, whether that's in a classroom, whether that's in some farmyard, whether that's in some factory, whether that's in some office, you don't know, you don't know, but God needs you where you are. And then you remember what happened there. He was blamed in the wrong. A, a crime that called for capital punishment. And he was cast into prison. And I'm sure Joseph wondered, where are you, Lord? Do you ever complain to God like that? I'm sure Joseph was wondering, where on earth is God in all of this this morning? And when Joseph was in the prison, I would believe that this was Joseph's darkest hour. He was there for two years. And you read in the book of Psalms, Psalm 105, verse 15, they hurt his feet with fetters and kept him in a, coal, in a coat of brass. And Joseph, it was one hit after another, one hit after another, one disappointment after another, one thing after another. Maybe that's you this morning. It's one disappointment after another, one hit after another, one hit, one hit, one hit. And this morning, perhaps, you're in this tabernacle, and this morning it's your darkest hour. And Joseph, the man who received the dreams from God, is now in prison for something he never do or never done. You want to know something? Even though he was blamed in the wrong, even though she told lies about him, it was in the very prison that God needed him. God allowed it to happen because God needed him to be in the prison. And you will read in Genesis You'll read in Genesis 39, verse 21. <laughs> but God was with Joseph in the prison. God's with you, child of God, no matter how difficult and how dark and daunting the situation is. Now, here's the wee thing. 
God was working it all out. God was in the prison before Joseph even left, left the father's house that day. He was in the prison, had it all worked out. Because you see, Joseph made a connection with the butler. And Joseph could never have made connection with the butler until he was put in prison. And you remember, it was in the prison, in that dark place where Joseph revealed the butler's dream. You see, child of God, things don't happen by chance. God's in control of your bad time. Because, you see, he was brought into the prisoner, prison, he had connections with the butler who had connections with the king. And you remember the story, don't you? Down the pathway, the king heard about Joseph. And Joseph was brought forth, and Joseph was made prime minister of the land. Maybe this morning you've been taking one hit after another, one disappointment after another, and I'll tell you, the path for you is anything but pleasant. And every step has been difficult. As the Lord was with Joseph, he's with you this morning. Joseph couldn't understand why or what was happening, but God knew. God had it all worked out, and God needed Joseph to be in that position to save his people in a day to come. You see, child of God, what we need to remember, God knows the end. From the beginning. I remember being in Corey Ten Boom's house, and the wee tour guide asked me to look up at look at a tapestry hanging on the wall. Underneath it, there was not only threads, but on the other side, it said this: "God is with you." All you see is the threads of confusion. But on the other side, friends, God is with you. The promise that is assuring, the promise that is abiding. Look at the promise that is appealing. Look, it's a promise that is appealing. And, uh, and the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Child of God, tell me this this morning. When have you ever once known God to fail you? And when have you ever known God once to forsake you? We might fail God miserably, child of God, at times. But God will never fail us. And He'll never forsake us. You know, Moses was the great candidate. There couldn't have been a better man to encourage these people because he was the man that could prove the promise. God didn't fail us at the Red Sea. God didn't forsake us at the Red Sea. God didn't fail us at Marah when the waters were bitter. God didn't forsake us in these 40 years in the wilderness. If there ever was a man that could encourage these people this morning, it was, it was Moses, because Moses proved this promise. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. I'll tell you, child of God, he didn't fail you in salvation. 
He didn't fail or forsake the disciples in the storm. No. He didn't forsake or he didn't fail the three Hebrew princes in the fire. No. Listen, dear. He'll not fail thee. Brother, he won't fail you here. And you've come to this tabernacle this morning, and your heart is heavy, and you have to face a world out there with a smile. You remember this. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I close with the last wee phrase of that verse. Listen to what it says. Fear not, neither be dismayed. What a promise as they faced Jericho. What a promise to face the nations that were greater than they. I know you have your Jericho to face this week. It is the Lord that doth go before thee. Do you believe that? He will be with thee. Do you believe that? He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Do you believe that? Because when Joseph was in that prison, he realized there God was with him all the time. God's pathway often presents great problems. God wants you to take this promise with you this morning and to learn it is He, He that doth go before thee. And it's He that will be with thee. And it's he that shall not fail thee, nor forsake thee. A wee word from his heart to your heart this morning. Are you listening? Fear not. Be not dismayed. His love will not let you go. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. We're going to